Hi, it's Raquel with Balloon Splendor with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, quick access toolbar that I have up here and what the different parts do and other places that you can find them. So right off the bat we're going to start with the quick access toolbar. I happen to have mine below the ribbon. You can also have it above the ribbon too. So if you're not finding it below your ribbon Yours may be up here, so uh, there it is. I like mine down lower because it's closer to my workspace. So the first button I have here is the save, and I think save is here. Yep, you've got save, save as, and print, and save, save as, and print right there. I also have my insert pictures, and that can also be found here with insert pictures and it's also where you can find the insert shapes button and the insert page parts button and your draw text box button is there also I don't have that on my quick access toolbar um, I don't add text that often so it's not there so that's what uh, some more of these buttons are this one here is a set transparent color and I don't recall Okay, I think I actually have to have a, a picture opened up to, to set a transparent color. I don't remember where to find that elsewhere. Is it here? No. I don't remember where it is. That's probably why I put it on my... Oh, I think it might be here. Nope. Yeah, I don't remember where it is. So that's why I have it on my quick access toolbar, so I'm not having to go hunting all over for it. Okay, and I use that a lot. Usually uh, when I'm doing clip art and it has like a white background, in a picture like this, using that tool isn't going to be nearly as effective just because there's so many different colors in here to, to actually pick one and set it as transparent would be kind of silly, at least with Publisher. With other software, you can delete the background a lot more effectively. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. So this is your, uh, you can make some basic shapes. I'm going to control copy and paste a few of these so I can demonstrate some of the other functionality here. Okay, so we also have a shape fill. And if you'll notice, when I have a color selected, it will show up under the bucket. So that means if I click on an object and just click on it, it's going to change it to that color. If you want to change it to a completely different color, then you got to hit the little arrow down and pick a different color. Okay, so that's how that works. And then you've got picture border, and uh, so obviously that's the border of the image that you have drawn here. This be The picture border button is important when you're working with the balloons because even though we don't think of balloons when we're looking at it with our natural eye as having a border, when you're creating balloons digitally, like if I were to uh, make a quick little quad from the side, looking at it uh, from the side here, and if I get rid of my borders or make them the same color as the rest of the balloon, you just got a blob. So that's why it's important to uh, actually have borders. Now you don't, they don't have to be black, they don't have to be quite that bold. And the other thing that you can control here too is how thick the lines are. Okay? So sometimes what I'll do to, to tone down that is I will just pick a different shade of the color I'm using. So for example, I've got blue balloons, so I'm gonna do maybe a light blue outline on them to focus more on the balloon color and less on the outline. Okay, let's see what else do we got here. Uh, group and ungroup. So grouping and ungrouping is selecting different items. I'm going to go ahead and hold my shift key down so I can select items. And you can group them so now they become one unit. You can move them around as one unit and you can also color them all in at the same time. Okay, and even though they're grouped, 
within a group, you can still select and change the color. Okay, you'll notice that there's two sets of guidelines. There's this this set and then there's these little tiny ones around a particular object. So it's when the little one is the little ones are around it you can still change and control colors. I just discovered that I think earlier this week doing these tutorials. Okay. Uh, what else do I have in my tool box? Okay, so when you've got things grouped together and you want to ungroup them, you click ungroup and now they're individual pieces again. I use group and ungroup all the time. Okay, the next piece, the next tool here is my uh, page parts where I keep my building blocks. And this is a new thing for me too, I just discovered recently. And I love it. I will never have to rebuild anything again that I build over and over and over again. So like here's a column for example. And I can go in and I can start coloring it in for a client just like that. I don't have to sit there and build build it each time. Okay. I can also select it and color it all in at one time or I can ungroup it and now I can go in with my control shift and uh, highlight certain balloons to produce a spiral. Let's see if I did that correctly here. I did, look at that. So now we've got a spiral column. I missed one right there. It should be white also. Okay, so in this example my lines are a little dark, so maybe I don't want them quite that dark. I can go in here and I can change my line color. I can, uh, maybe I want to go a little gray. Maybe I like the black, but maybe I don't want them quite as thick. So I can come in here and I can make them smaller. And that tones down the lines a little bit, not quite as a coloring bookish. So that's the quick access toolbar there. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for now. And okay, the move forward and move back. These buttons are also found in the drawing tools. When you click on a, a, an item, a picture or a, a thing that you have drawn, that toolbar will come up. So if I'm over here in home or I'm in, in here in insert and then I click on this, this will highlight over here and you know you can click on that and now you've got some options here. Uh, you've got some pre-formats, you've got some different things you can do. If you want to go 3D on it, you can. See that, that's kind of cool. I don't know what application it would have necessarily in balloon art. Uh, maybe to show that your platform is maybe a mirror to show the reflective qualities. That might be kind of cool. Um, I think you've got some bevel options on there too if you want to give it a little 3D effect there. So anyway, um, bring forward and bring back. That's what we were looking at. So what that does here is it allows you to control which of these images is on top and which one is on the bottom. Okay, so I can send things backward and I can send, send things forward if you're watching right here. You can see how uh, different things come forward and go backwards. So that's what these do. I use these all the time also. Uh, then we've got a rotate button if you want to turn something around. Sometimes we want to do that. You can either grab it and do a free rotate or you can uh, rotate it 90 degrees, you can flip it vertically and horizontally, you can do a free rotate where you can just grab these buttons and move them around. Sometimes when you click on an object, oh now I'm in free rotate mode, okay. Sometimes when you click on an object this little button up here doesn't show up, that's also your rotate. So you can click here for the free rotate and do that. There's also other options here, you can actually control it by degrees if you want to control the precise rotation. You can do that. It's useful when you're doing something that's symmetrical and you need you need to space it out exactly eight around the circle or whatever. That that's where you can go for that. Oh let's see. Okay, print print's kinda obvious. Um this block up here I use quite a bit also. Um this is where I will make sure my circles are actually circles or if I need to make my, like let's say I was going to make a table and my scale is 
uh, one inch equals one foot, and I know this is supposed to be a six foot table, I can go up here and make it six inches, and now I know this represents my six foot table. And I know standard tables are 30 inches high, which is two and a half feet, so I can come up here and make it two and a half foot. So now that's a standard table right there. And then I can go ahead and, you know, build my decor around that to scale. Like, uh, let's say I wanted to build my column next to it. So if this is two and a half feet, this would probably be about a five foot column. Let's see. Yep, it's almost a six foot column. So if I wanted to make it a, okay, I'm going to lock my aspect ratio first. That way when I make this six, the width is going to increase proportionately. Okay, very important button right here. So what that does is it keeps things in proportion. Okay, and you've also got your free rotate button there too. Look at that. Okay. So someone has a six foot long table and they want to see what a, what a couple of six foot tall columns would look like next to it. You can control, uh, do a control C and a control V for copy and paste and there's a six foot table with a couple of six foot columns next to them. Okay, so that's how that works. I think there was one more thing I wanted to show you over here. Okay, so with scale, uh, I've got one of my columns selected here. Let's say I wanted to do one at 75% as high. So we've got a six foot tall one and then we've got one that's about four and a half feet tall. And let's say then we're going to scale another one that's maybe three feet tall. So I can come in here and see we can go here and we're going to do it at half, at 50%. So now I've got different sized columns, like if you're going to do a stage backdrop or something and you want a different sizes, there they are. And then if you wanted to know how big to make your balloons to get this kind of proportion, if you click on just the one balloon, it's 0.69 inches, so then you can do the conversion. If one inch equals one foot, then, you know, what is 0.7 inches? It's a uh, 0.7 feet, so you can convert that over. That'd be, what, about eight inches maybe? And you can do the same thing here with this little bubble here. It's uh, about 0.5, so I'm thinking that's about a six inch balloon, and if you're gonna do a three foot column and you want you know, the same amount of quads in it. Now you're at a, at a third of an inch, so it's a, what, about a four inch balloon? So that's one way to design and then figure out what size balloons you need. And that's in that tool. Again, you click on the item and go to the Drawing Tools Format tab. Very important block there. So I hope this is helpful in scaling things and knowing how to set up your Quick Access Toolbar. Do explore some of the other options in there. Uh, there's lots of commands. There may be something that you uh, want to use. You may be uh, big into putting texts into your pictures. Maybe you want to put your prices in there. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, make it work for you. All right, well, there it is. This is Raquel Porter with Balloon Splendor.